الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين All praise and glory to Allah and peace and blessing be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Anbiya and Salihin Alhamdulillah we've just um, exited the month of Ramadan and uh, it's a month of taqwa self-restraint where we practice our ability to resist and uh, the specific thing we're resisting in Ramadan is food from sunrise to sunset. This is the idea of taqwa, to be conscious, to restrain yourself. And I thought it's a good idea since Ramadan is so fresh in our minds that we can just share some words today, simple example, to restrain ourselves, to build on the taqwa that hopefully we have uh, strengthened this month of Ramadan. And I thought I was speak about speech therapy, how we control our appetites in Ramadan, it's critical for us to control our speech and our words. The Prophet is reported to have said, most of the sins of the children of Adam are on their tongues. It's quite a um, serious statement, um, but our tongues can easily uh, destroy, our tongues can easily inspire, they are really powerful without us realizing it. And we need to take consciousness of the words we use. Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, in chapter 17, verse 53, Allah says, Allah says, Allah says, Allah says, say to my servants, Yaqul al-lati hiya ahsan. Say to my servants, Yaqul, that they say al-lati hiya ahsan. Say good words, ahsan. The description of our words should be ahsan. Inna shaytana yanzahu baynahum. Because shaytan does so dissensions among them. Shaytan is a clear enemy to men. Shaytan is always looking for ways to cause fitna amongst us, to cause hatred amongst us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us united and shaitan wants us divided. That's the bottom line. And shaitan waits for our words. You know, as soon as a word is our mouth, he's waiting. What kind of word is there? And that's why this verse combines our words with shaitan because he's waiting. He's our clear enemy. He's waiting for you to use the wrong words. And then he can wait, spread his fitna and facade. These words they come out of our mouths, can either be full of goodness or they can be evil. The type of words we use is the choice we make. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the words we use in a beautiful analogy in Surah 14 verses 24 to 27. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in its analogy, Alam tara kaifa, do you not see Allah sets forth a parable for you? Do you not see how Allah sets forth a parable? A goodly word, kalimatin tayyiba, kashajara, is like a goodly tree, whose root is firmly fixed and its branches reach to the heavens of its Lord. So Allah sets forth parables for men in order that they may receive admonition. It brings forth its fruit at all times for the leave of its Lord. So Allah sets forth parables for men in order that they may receive admonition. These are the good words. If we take the example of a parent or a child, or a teacher and a student, or let's take a simple example of an employee and an employee. If the employee uses a respectful word with the employee, if you treat your staff well and you speak to them with respect, with due respect, and use good words with them, then respect will turn into obedience, commitment to work, and it will add to the prosperity for the employer. So these good words the employee uses for his employee, they turn into respect, they turn into dedication, just like a, a student and a teacher. You know, a teacher respects the student, the student will respect the teacher and uh, will give the teacher due attention and, and he'll flourish. So this leads to success. Good words put in our businesses, but in our, especially in our team, but we can see in our businesses, in our homes, when we use good words, Prosperity follows, peace follows. And then Allah compares another parable on the same thing. وَمَثَلُوا كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثًا And the parable of an evil word, كَشَّجَرَةٍ خَبِيثًا It's like an evil tree. 
It is torn up by the road from the surface of the earth. It has no stability. So if you find that an employee who uses harsh words with the employee and he, he, he uses foul, foul language maybe, what will happen? You will find friction and tension building up. The employee will wait for opportunities to get back at his employer, looking for every opportunity to steal or to do something bad against his employer. Or finally, will let us to a dread place called CCMA. You know? How do you treat your staff? How do you speak to them? You need to speak to them with good words. When you use good words, you'll find that your business will flourish. If you use good words as a teacher, you'll find more students listen to you. And when they listen to you, they will have good marks. I mean, what does a teacher want from a student? They want the, the, the child to listen. You can't get the child to listen. You see, you little idiot, you little rubbish. What you did here? You keep on messing my life. I can't go home and sleep at night because of you. It can't work. You have to straight change your strategy, your words. Shaitan waits for these words. And the good words are so beautiful, they create respect, you know. But Madhah teaches us to control our appetite. It teaches us to withhold from eating from sunrise to sunset. We need to learn to control our tongues. That's what we need to learn to control, our tongues. Good words will bring us blessings and spread goodness all around us. Evil, harsh words will lead to nothing but stress, frustration and difficulties. Our words are so powerful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that the starting point of personal reformation to goodness starts with our speech. If we want to reform our lives, we want better lives, we want purer lives, then we have to start with our speech, the words we use. Allah tells us in Surah 33, verses 70 to 71, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu tabullah, O you believe, fear Allah, 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 be aware of Allah. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Say a word directed to the right. قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Straight words. Fair words. Good words. يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ That ye may make your conduct whole. يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ Salaha means to repair or to reform أَعْمَالَكُمْ Allah will reform your actions. Allah will reform you. Will reform your behavior. behavior. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَ لَكُمْ And He will forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has already attained the highest achievement. By using good, straight, fair words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reform our actions and our behavior and forgive us our sins. I mean, how powerful are you? Allah is saying, you speak the right words and I will reform yourself. We're all looking for personal reformation. People go for motivation talks. Um, we have Brother Saratullah Khan comes always to speak about this type of thing. But it starts with a simple, simplest thing like speech. And it's not that simple. It, you know, Ramadan is all about food. And food we might take it as nothing in our lives. But if we eat bad food, we go to the doctor. Our personal reformation begins with our words. Just like a person who wants to lose weight, if a guy wants to lose weight, and live a healthier lifestyle, you know, everybody saying go for jogging, and it's become a common thing. A healthy lifestyle has become uh, I think one of the great, greatest businesses right now. But people want to lose weight and have a healthier lifestyle. To go, uh, they go, what do they do? They go on a well balanced diet. We need to put our words to a well balanced diet. Just as in a diet, we are allowed some foods and not others when we take our words on a diet. We need to first accept our words need some tricky. You're going to go on a diet to become a healthier person. Now you need to take your words on your diet. We need to consciously start taking note of the words we use. Make a list of these words. We can introduce good words into our speech. Like in a diet, you know, they say, stop eating too much carbs, you know. Stop eating too much moidin steaks and chips, you know. And replace it with some vegetables. So what we do, we stop using some of the vulgar words we are so used to. We stop using words like stupid, idiot, idiot. We stop using racist words. These are still common. And we replace it with the vegetables. We replace it with the good words. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Do we really say thank you that often? Do we really greet? Do we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We greet each other. What about non-Muslims? Do we say hello, good morning? 
Say good morning. Like I. Always end off, whenever you are with a non Muslim, always end off with just like God bless you. God bless you. This death alone brings Allah's blessings. Because you, 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 are, you are seeking Allah's blessings. God bless you. You want barakah. In these verses that you just read, chapter 3, verse 7 to 71, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees our personal affirmation if we just work on using our good words. The idea of using good words, the advice of using good words, the turn of, is not something new. Throughout the ages when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent revelations, He always touched on this idea of good words. I might call it advice. But if you look at the journal of Israel, in Surah 2, I think it's verse 83. Two verse 83. Surah 2, verse 83. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a covenant, a promise from the Bani Israel, Allah says, And remember, we took a covenant from the children of Israel to this effect. Number one, worship not but Allah. Treat with kindness your parents and your family, and orphans and those in need. Number one, what's the covenant? What's the pact? The promise? To worship only one Allah. Number two, to be kind to your parents, to the family, to orphans. And what's the third on this list? What's the third thing on this list? Speak fair to the people. Speak fair, speak words of husna, ihsan to the people. So this was a command to the children of Israel to speak good words. The, the, the description of the words by anybody else who knows you should say, his words are husna. And it goes on, be said fast in prayer, practice regular charity, then you turn, turn back, except a few among you, and you backslide even now. So this command was from, from old. Even when Musa alayhi salam himself, when he was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and visit <coughs> Pharaoh, the mighty arrogant Pharaoh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs him, Fabula lahu, but speak to him, Fabula lahu, the two of you, Allah talk to Musa and Haram. Go alayhi nalla allahu yadadakkara o yaksha. Allah tells Musa alayhi salam and uh, Haram alayhi salam, go speak to Pharaoh, layhi nalla in a mild manner, perchance you may take warning of your Allah. If you want somebody to listen to you, then you have to talk with respect. You have to talk with respect and use good words, and they will listen to you. How many times we find teachers, parents, this child never listens to me. <laughs> the parent get upset, the teacher, the, the employee, this. This little idiot, I can't handle him anymore, he doesn't listen to me. And we start screaming. Now we just started two verses before we end off. Two verses. Now it's not just about the words, but even the tone. Our tone is just as important. Allah subhanahu wa tells us in Surah 49 verse 2. Oh, you who believe, raise not your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa now speak aloud to him and talk, as you may speak aloud to one another, lest your deeds become vain and you perceive it not. We are instructed by Allah subhanahu wa that in the presence of the Prophet we are to lower our voice. We should not scream. But if we extend this akhlaq to the, other, to the Prophet and we extend it to all of humanity, we realize that we have to tone down our voices. We must stay away from screaming. As far as screaming, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs us against it in quite a beautiful manner. In Surah Al-Uqman, chapter 31, verse 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waqsid fi masjid, and be moderate in your pace. Waqdud min sawtik, and lower your voice. Inna ankar al-aswat, with the harshest of sound, without doubt, is the sawt al-hamir, is the brain of the ass, or the donkey. When a donkey screams, he can scream all he wants, but his words are meaningless because they lose their value. In screaming, we totally lose the value. You can scream a hundred times. The person will not listen. He'll hear the voice, he'll hear the sounds, but he won't hear the words. Screaming takes away the emphasis from the words themselves. So we have to speak good words, but also speak mildly. Don't scream. Words are powerful tools that can motivate and inspire. 
or that they emulate and destroy. Just as the food we eat leads either to a good, healthy body or to a sick, weak body, so do our words lead to a healthy, peaceful society or to a stressed, chaotic society. So just as these words are there, the, the food, you eat unhealthy food, you'll, you'll suffer the consequence. You eat good food, you'll enjoy the benefits. The same thing, if we start changing our words, we get a lot to reform us, the whole society gets reformed. The peace in the society starts with the words we use. The famous uh, quote, watch your, watch your thoughts, but they become your words. Watch your words, become, because they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, for they become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Even this little quote it says, watch your, watch your. Even though this quote, you know, I don't know what Myanmar put it, but it tells us to be watchful. And when we talk about the idea of being watchful, careful, then it is nothing less than the idea of taqwa, to be careful and watchful. And here we are told to be careful about taqwa, conscious of our words. I just leave you with the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the reported words of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who says, when the son of Adam awakened in the morning, all of his body parts defer to the tongue, to the tongue. All his body parts defer to the tongue. They say, Fear Allah concerning us. For we are only a part of you. If you are straight, then we are straight. And if you are crooked, then we are crooked. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to good speech, good words, good tone. May Allah protect us from harsh and vulgar and uh, racist towards, may Allah protect us from screaming, may Allah grant us akhlaq that is beautiful, for we bear witness it is here as the power of all things. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin, wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.